I'm a pretty good Photoshop user, but I never actually spent the time to learn how to use Lightroom. And all of my photography friends give me crap and say, oh my gosh, Lee, you're missing out. Lightroom's so much easier than Photoshop. Why haven't you gotten into Lightroom? And uh, in all honesty, it was just kind of a little bit of laziness, a little bit of uh, confusion. Every time I opened up Lightroom, I didn't quite understand the catalog system. I just wanted to edit this one image. And so I'd get really frustrated and just close out of Lightroom, go back to Photoshop. So one of my really close friends is Pai Jerza. He's one of the owners at slrlounge.com and he is an incredible Lightroom user. So I, I came to him and I said, Pai, listen, I, I really need to learn how to use Lightroom. It's been long enough. Obviously Lightroom is a great piece of software. All of my photography friends are using it. But when I go on YouTube and I find all this free content, it's still very confusing to me to find exactly which videos I need to watch in what order so that I can understand exactly how to use this software. Do you think you could create something and I could watch it and I could learn how to use Lightroom after just a few hours? And he said, yes, we can definitely do that. I'll have it for you in about a week or two. Welcome to the F-Stoppers How to Use Lightroom Workshop. Now this is the ultimate crash course when it comes to really jumping into Lightroom and hitting the ground running, creating amazing images. So when I was bouncing this idea off of Pi, I, I told him, it's so important that if you make this, I don't want it to just be another long video that you just sit there and watch on your television and you have to remember everything. I wanna follow along with you. I want the image that you're working on on the video, I wanna have the image and I wanna be able to recreate the exact same shot you do. Watching somebody use software is one of the most boring things you can possibly do, but if you get to actually follow along with somebody, it can be really, really fun. I placed the exercise files on my desktop, okay? And they're under the exercise file folder. So make sure that you have the exercise files at this point because we're gonna import them to begin working on them. If you don't have them, download them now. Now, what we're gonna do is click that exercise file folder and you'll see them pop up in the center area. Now, if you're the type of user that has dual monitors, you can actually download all 37 chapters. You can put one file on your left monitor, and then you can have Lightroom open on your right monitor. And as you watch this tutorial, you'll be able to see Pi in the corner of one monitor with all of Lightroom exactly laid out how it is on your computer, and it makes it super easy for you to follow along. If you don't have dual monitors, or maybe you're gonna watch this without being in front of your computer, you can download this to your iPad, you can put it on your mobile device, you can even stream it to your television. So if you're in your living room and you just wanna watch a quick chapter, it's really easy to watch this 1080 video anywhere you want. Here's that basic file, the imported file, and then here's our after. We've done a great job with the Tony. And you can say that this looks finished, but let's take it a little bit further. We're gonna add our extra oomph now. What I'm gonna do is select an adjustment brush. And the dress and brush I'm gonna use is a general all-purpose detail enhancer from the preset system. Now I created this brush to basically do a, a nice job of enhancing overall details, particularly in say clothing. So I assumed that this was going to be a couple hours long and you know, by the end of this thing, I'd have a pretty good handle on how to use Lightroom. But what I found was after about two hours, I did know how to use Lightroom, but then there was six or eight hours left of tutorials and I went through every single one. And Pi taught me how to do HDR stuff. He taught me how to do incredible looking black and white images. He taught me how to optimize Lightroom so that it works as quickly as it possibly can on your computer. He taught me how to cull through images. So if you shoot weddings or you shoot events and you have hundreds or thousands of images, what is the best workflow to quickly go through all of those pictures? Uh, if you wanna go with the vintage look or you wanna go with a very particular look that you come up with yourself, he goes through all of these things. I want you to see what a histogram looks like on a standard image. This is a, basically what it's gonna look like on an image where you've maximized tonal range is it looks like a U. So it's kind of like this where you have shadows pushed against the left edge, but not clipped beyond the shadow point. You have highlights pushed against the right edge and you have that U shape. When we've maximized it, it flips, okay? So basically what we get is we get a reverse shape. So here you get the U when it's maximized. Uh, in raw, when it's actually processed and tone mapped, it flips to a reverse U, okay? You can kind of see that shape right here. For my wedding work, I actually shoot with Nikon D800 files, which are 36 megapixel images, so the RAW files are really large. And one of the most important things I learned from watching this tutorial is how to optimize my Lightroom catalog. Pi is extremely thorough on how to get everything running as fast as possible so that you can get through your workflow extremely quickly. So that's the folder that I use, and inside that folder or inside that drive, I've dedicated 200 gigs of space for Lightroom to store cache files. Otherwise, if you don't have enough space, 
any new previews that are created are gonna basically remove old previews. It's gonna kind of bump old previews out. So I wanna keep everything within a catalog inside my cache. That's one of the biggest settings that's gonna help in overall performance and optimization inside Lightroom. I think the great thing about this tutorial is that it's really made with everybody in mind. If you're the type of person that's already got somewhat of a handle on Lightroom, you can skip the first few chapters and get into the more advanced stuff. But if you're somebody like me who's literally never used Lightroom before, it takes you from the very, very beginning. And since you have the files, the exact same files that Pi has, and you're working along with him, you get to do every single step that he does. So there's absolutely no way you're going to be confused. You're not gonna be left behind on anything like you are in so many other tutorials. So what we're gonna do is warm it up, but first I wanna make some other adjustments just so when I warm it, I actually get it to a close value. So let's go ahead and adjust first the exposure. That's the first adjustment. That's probably the biggest one we need to make. I'm gonna go up to 1.29. And the reason why I'm gonna go a little bit high, I can even go to 1.4 is because I'm gonna pull down a little bit of the highlights and a little bit of the whites right here. So once I pull those down and also add in my blacks and my shadows, we're probably going to get close to where we want the image to be. What I'm going to do now is that now that we're in the range of brightness for this overall image, what I'm going to do is bring the temperature up. So let's bring it up to, I'm going to go to maybe like 54, 5500 ish. And I might bring it up one click on the tint. Now, being that I'm a pretty experienced Lightroom user, I really didn't need to watch every single chapter. I didn't need to watch the intro chapters that Pi created. So it was great that he's divided this up into 37 different files. So I can literally go find the chapter on tilt shift lens if I want to learn how to do that and watch only the material that I'm not familiar with. And I'm going to paint it or I'm going to draw it in based on kind of the lines, the natural lines. And it's going to be based on the direction that she's looking. So we're going to go diagonally up from the bottom right. Okay, paint all the way in. I'm gonna go with the second layer. It's gonna go in further with a stronger feather. I'm gonna go with the third layer. It's gonna go in, but not quite as far. I'm gonna go from the same direction, kind of from the top left. We're gonna pull it in. Go in quite far with the first one. Go in not quite as far with the second. Go in not quite as far with the third. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in and see if we have too light of sharpening overall in the image. And I think we're actually pretty good. But I think the most important thing is that I can just burn through so many images now. If you shoot a few hundred images and you're trying to go through image by image in Photoshop, like I always have done, that's just crazy. You don't need to be working like that. You can do it in Lightroom in about one tenth of the time. And I believe that the software is far superior to Photoshop in that way. Let's go ahead now and what I want to do is I want to apply what we just did here to this next image. But here's the thing is I don't want to go and do that whole thing again. That took us like five minutes to do that. Now, if I was doing it on my own, it probably would only take like say 30 seconds or so, but still that's 30 seconds of work that I don't want to repeat. So what I need to do is actually copy the settings from this over to the next image. The easiest way to do that when I'm going from one image to the next is to use the previous button or the previous function. Okay. So previous you'll see is just a button over here in the bottom of the uh, develop panel. And if we click that, it copies over the exact settings from the previous image. Now this doesn't mean the image that was prior in the film strip. What it means is it means from the last image you had selected. The thing that I like most about Lightroom compared to Photoshop is everything's non-destructive. So you can literally do 40 different things to get one image looking perfect, but then you can revisit Lightroom a year later and say, oh, that blemish tool that I used, I don't really like how I did that. You can turn it off. You can uh, change the white balance, you can change the shadow highlights and everything like that, all right in Lightroom. So what I'm gonna do now is let's go ahead and, and grab our spot removal tool. We're just gonna zoom in and we're gonna bring that feather up a little bit and just start to kind of diminish some of these items that may not be uh, what we would call are those character features, right? So these aren't really character features. This is, this little mole right here on Ryan's face, I don't wanna remove stuff like that. I just wanna kind of diminish other things. Uh, little tiny pimples or skin blemishes, those are what we wanna really remove. I think the problem with Photoshop is, Photoshop is designed to do so many different things. You can do graphic design and 3D and animation stuff in Photoshop. And for the majority of photographers, they don't even wanna get into that stuff. And the problem is, if you wanna make a simple change, you have to go through all of these different menus to find exactly what you're looking for. Lightroom has every single thing you could possibly want just as a photographer right on the side. Uh, you're not going to go having to dig through menus or anything like that. It's just going to be right there. And I find it much more easy to use once you get over that little hump of learning the basics of the software. What we're going to do is raise the black clipping a bit. We're going to drop the highlight clipping a bit. 
Now what I'm gonna do in between is I'm actually gonna boost my shadows. Let's raise the shadows a little bit. Let's raise the mid-tone shadows as well. I'm gonna drop the mid-tone highlights and drop the highlights a little bit as well. Now what do you see here? What kind of shape is this? This is a reverse S-curve. Now if a standard S-curve is used to boost overall contrast, then what would a reverse S-curve do? it's going to flatten out a little bit of the contrast. Now, if you're the type of photographer who doesn't do anything to their images, but you want to start learning post-production, I think Lightroom's a great starting point for that. And you're going to learn that post-production is really half of the art of photography these days. If you're like Lee and you've never done any post-production outside of Photoshop, I think you're going to find that Lightroom is the perfect tool to supplement your photography. So you hit J to bring that up and it'll tell you anywhere that's basically blued out, okay? Or if the highlights are red. So if we bring this up, you can see the areas that go red. All the red areas or the blue areas is where your shadows, if it's blue, are clipping and where your highlights, if it's red, are gonna be blown out. So that's showing areas that are gonna print in either pure black or pure white. And generally for most types of shots, you don't want too much. I would say that this is a little bit on the high side, but we're going for that poppy portraiture look. And the more pop, the more contrast you wanna create, the more kind of this pure black and pure white we need to have in the image to have that. What I really took away from Pi was that you're not only gonna be impressed by Pi Jerza as a photographer, but you're gonna be impressed by what you can do to your own images using these techniques. And we're just gonna paint along with the highlight of the eye, okay? And then I'm gonna remove it from the areas that we don't need it. So we don't need it in the corners, we don't need it touching the underside of the eye, and we don't want it going to this shadow area on the top. Okay, I'm gonna go over this side. Again, I'd recommend that if you guys wanna be more precise, use a different brush for each side because different, each side of the eye is gonna be a little bit different in brightness, okay? When we've set out to create these tutorials, we always go to the top guys in the field. And so when we did Peter Hurley's, we went to the top headshot photographer. When we knew it was time to do something on architecture photographer, we seeked out Mike Kelly and he did an incredible job with that tutorial. And when it came time now to do something on Lightroom, we said, who's the best guy who knows everything about Lightroom? And instantly we knew that was Pi Jersey. He produces the most thorough tutorials out there and we knew we were in good hands with him. My name is Pi. Again, I wanted to thank you all, as if you guys didn't know, my name is Pi at this point. All right, I wanted to thank you all for your support and I'll see you all in the next video.